In this lecture, we're going to take just a couple of minutes and consider the ancient history of irrigation. Now, the history of irrigation is definitely tied to agriculture. From the very beginning of recorded civilization, we know that mankind has been in a struggle to feed themselves. If you've ever been involved in any kind of agriculture or even gardening, surely you understand how difficult it is to produce food, not just for one person, but for an entire city or an entire civilization, requires a lot of work. So from the very beginning, man has been struggling to figure out clever and innovative ways of irrigating their crops and getting more food, getting better production out of the land that they had and the water that they had available to them. What these ancient peoples didn't have, they didn't have tractors or combines or greenhouses. They didn't have electric pumps or filters or global distribution networks. What they did have was varying climate patterns, uh, rainfall that would be great one year, not so great the next. And our history even records in these ancient times up to seven and ten year famines and droughts. So they had a lot going against them. So they had to get really clever and manage the resources that they had. Okay, so maybe 6,000 years ago, 6,000 to 4,000 BC, depending on what sources you look at, they're discussing the Egyptian Nile Delta and that basin there. And the Egyptians probably had a little bit better time with the agriculture than everybody else around them. And ancient history kind of records that they were the breadbasket, so to speak, of the entire region. And when some of these droughts and famines were going on, that Egypt was really the main supply of food for the entire area. So what they had going for them was the Nile River. And every year, somewhere between June and December, the Nile floods. And what they had done was cut a system of canals and channels into the fields. And when the Nile flooded, they would use a simple device called a sluice. And in this situation, a sluice is just basically a wooden gate in a frame. And when the fields and the canals would flood, they would close the sluices allow the water to sit for up to 60 days or so on the fields and then open the sluices at the right time and allow the water to return to the Nile. So they had a really easy time of it, but let's look at some of their neighbors over in the Tigris-Euphrates area and they kind of give us some indications of some different situations in agriculture. They were having problems with the salinization of the soil. This speaks to soil quality and drainage issues. And now let's explain this for just a second. Now, anytime that you're applying irrigation water to a field, artificially applying water, that water contains some salts. Now, if you were applying maybe distilled water, distilled water is about the only thing that doesn't have salts and rainwater wouldn't have it, but when you're artificially applying water and the water either gets used by the plant or um, evaporates out into the atmosphere, what's left behind is the salts in the water. Over time, this can build up and cause a problem with the pH, which is the balance in the soil that allows nutrients to be accepted into the plants. And we'll get into a more technical definition of that a little bit later on. But the reason I'm going over this ancient history is really for this one concept here is because salinization, pH, soil quality, these are big things that most irrigation technicians don't quite understand and don't really consider, but they're at the root of everything that we're trying to do. Now, even today, we have problems with salinization, and currently, over 25 million acres a year are being abandoned because of salinization issues. So that's a really big deal. We're trying to feed ourselves here, and uh, when you're having to abandon farmland because the soil quality gets shot because of your irrigation practices, well, that tells you that maybe we need to upgrade some of our practices. And in some areas of the world, they're still using, you know, uh, ancient methods to irrigate their crops and so forth, but with some of the new innovations in drip irrigation and some of the things we'll talk about later, we're helping these people double, triple the output of their agricultural fields so that they can feed themselves. Now here in the U.S., 
We're primarily concerned, you know, and especially in this course, we're concerned about landscape irrigation. And I wouldn't say that's critical, but if you have thousands of dollars invested into a landscape, then yes, it is critical. And we're going to talk in a couple of lectures about why we irrigate and the environmental benefits of that. But these issues about ancient history still speak to the issues that we have today. So I really wanted to cover this and for you to understand it. So let's get back to the history. Now, they were using these sluices and this manner of irrigation from, say, 6,000 B.C. all the way up to maybe just a 1,000 years ago, and they're possibly still in play in some areas of the world. Around 2,000 B.C., we know that the Romans were making concrete pipes. So this is some of the very first examples that we have of piping systems. And we know about the aqueducts and some of the things that the Romans did, but they're actually quite brilliant in the way that they distributed water. So we're still using some of those same principles and some of those aqueducts can still be seen today thousands of years later. So fast forward a little bit to maybe 600 B.C., and the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the wonders of the ancient world. And they use a very complex series of pulleys and levers to supply water from lower areas and get it up to the top, um, hanging baskets that would drain down. It was a very complicated thing, and these people were quite brilliant in how it played out. But one of the main mechanisms in their system was called a shadoof. And basically it was a, a tall pole with a lever on the top and that's how they would raise water from one area to the next and then they would pass it up from one level to the next with these shadoofs. So pretty interesting thing. And so also what was going on in the world around that time was water wheels. Now, you may be familiar with the water wheel like we see here that's basically, you know, perched on a stream or a river and it uses the power of the moving water to turn gears which turn a grist mill, which grinds wheat or grain or whatever. We're very familiar with that. But in the ancient world, they were using some different variations of this. So one of the first was called the, the Noria, which was a water wheel that used hanging clay pots. And it was same perched on a, a river. And as the water came, it filled the pot up and the movement of the water would turn the wheel and the water would dump out at another a higher point and then run down into the field or their container or whatever brilliant concept, but in other places, possibly Syria, depends on the uh, historical account that you read or where these things were going on, but there was another version of this called the Sakya, which was a water wheel that was basically being turned by um, an animal, an ox, or something like that by an external means that then moved the water from one place to the next. It didn't use the power of water. It used the power of an animal or possibly even humans to move that water. So people were getting really creative. Now, around 250 B.C., we see probably one of the biggest revolutions in mechanical irrigation means in history, and that was the Archimedes screw. You know, we, we read the historical accounts, you know, Archimedes, I think, was uh, visiting Egypt and helped them design the Archimedes screw, which is basically a tube with a corkscrew inside of it. And when you turn the corkscrew, it moves water up the tube from one place to the next. And we still see these in use today. It was a brilliant design. And we know that Archimedes screws are being used in industry to move parts from one place to the next. And uh, like I said, a really, really brilliant concept and something that had a really lasting impact in agriculture at the time. Now we know that there was another device being used in ancient times and of course the, the times vary by the account that you read but it, with this particular method there was a clay pot that was made with some holes in it and the, the, the pot was pretty big and it was buried in the ground up to its neck. So basically all you had was an opening in the ground and this form of Agriculture basically used circles, and this is still in use in some parts of the world today, South America, Middle America, to where they're not using rows, just you know, wide open fields with rows. They actually put their plants in a circle and a watering method in it. So what this pot was, it was down in the ground, and you'd pour water into it, and the water would seep out and enrich the roots around it. So a very ancient method of drip irrigation that's still in use today.